Good morning, everyone, once again, and uh, glad to be here. The next part of our uh, program this morning is a short testimony uh, in the light of pluralism that we are talking about here. Here is uh, a woman, not in the field of theology, but who has been serving the Lord in her own field. And uh, I'm very proud to introduce her because she's my wife, Attorney Kim Santiago. Good morning, everyone. I'm Kim, his wife, uh, and I'm a missionary. And my current mission field is in the judiciary. When I entered law school 10 years ago, I didn't ask the Lord if he wanted me to become a lawyer. I was in the church, yes, but unfortunately, I wasn't, I wasn't in Christ. So I made life choices without asking for the Lord's will. But in 2013, when I finally got out of darkness into his marvelous light, I pleaded with him and told him that I would even quit law school if it was not his will for my life. I was ready to, to serve him in whatever capacity and wherever he asked me to be. Nevertheless, I saw his provisions, I experienced his mercy, he led me, and I was able to graduate. And amidst the countless challenges, I was able to take the bar examination in November 2015, which I treated as my mission trip. In May 2016, I received an invitation to speak before this group of Adventists scheduled to take the CPA board exam. My role was basically to encourage them and to help them prepare mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, since I went through a similar ordeal six months prior. It was an awkward predicament for me because the results of the bar examination that I took in November 2015 would be released just, just a few days before that scheduled talk, I thought if I passed, that would be inspiring. That would be so inspiring. If I didn't, that would be so humiliating. I prayed very hard, but the Lord directed me and directed me to go and serve him. And so I accepted the invite. Brothers and sisters, I failed that bar exam. But I'm telling you, that talk before this, this group of Adventists was one of the most powerful messages the Lord has given through me. So I went back reviewing for the bar, but it wasn't an easy decision. I still went through many days of frustration and pain over and over again, the Lord was patiently teaching me that in this mission field, self must die. In November 2016, I took the bar examination again. And again, I treated that as a mission trip. I gave out devotional books and prayed with some of the examinees there, just like what I did when I first took the bar. After that second take, I looked for a job right away, trusting that the Lord already had an assignment for me. It turned out to be at the Supreme Court of the Philippines. Being able to work there is one of, really one of the biggest miracles I've ever experienced in my life. You see, it is a sad reality that government employment in the country is still largely padrino-based, nepotism or cronyism. For one to be employed at such an august agency, one must know somebody influential from the inside. I didn't know, nor was I acquainted to any maintenance personnel 
security guard, secretary, legal clerk, or lawyer, or any of the 15 justices of the Supreme Court. And even through my own merits, there was no way I could be hired as I already flunked the bar once. But I know, I know the Chief Justice, not only of the Philippines, but the Chief Justice of the universe, the Father. And I personally know of his son, the greatest advocate in God's government, Jesus Christ. And I believe it was the Holy Spirit who urged that Kuya guard in the Supreme Court building to convince me to check or to look at the bulletin board to check for job vacancies. One great lesson I learned from working in this field is that in doing great commission, in doing the great commission, I must be intentional. Everything I do must be about our father's business. In a place where important decisions are made every day, I must only do that which will give glory to the Lord. One of my most favorite quotes says, the greatest want of the world is the want of men. Men who will not be bought or sold. Men who in their inmost souls are true and honest. Men who do not fear to call sin by its right name. Men whose conscience is as true to duty as the needle to the pole. Men who will stand for the right though the heavens fall. Failing the bar exam for the first time was a nightmare. But failing it for the second time was torture. I was already working at the Supreme Court when the results of the second bar examination was released. Honestly, the torture was no longer because of shame. I believe the Lord is already victorious in helping me to overcome that. It was actually because there, I was no longer sure about my calling. All along, I thought God wanted me to become a lawyer for him. I felt that I misinterpreted the Lord's leading. But every day, every day since April this year, when I finally, finally passed the bar exam, after taking it, Three times in three consecutive years, the Lord has been faithfully revealing to me why it didn't happen earlier. Truly, our ways are not His ways, and our thoughts are not His thoughts. I would just like to recall my first year at work. I would leave our apartment here at IS, Tower 013 at 5 o'clock in the morning to go to my mission field, and I would be back home at around 8 o'clock in the evening. That was from Monday to Friday. And I would spend a total of six hours on the bus a day. Many people would ask me, why, why make such a sacrifice? The simple answer is this. Love. I love my mission. That's why I would never get tired of going to work. I love IS, <laughs> its community and surroundings. This is where I would always find peace and rest after a day's work. And I love my husband. He is why I would always be excited to be home. But the greatest reason is this, my love for Jesus Christ. Despite the challenges and heartaches, I will continue to work for the salvation of souls for him. In our service, we face difficulties, failures, sufferings. For me in this field, twice of all this pain. The first time, Daniel 10 lifted me. The second, Lamentations 3 aided me. So twice also, God has saved me. Romans chapter 8, verse 18 says,
For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Happy Sabbath, everyone.